Okay, so here we are in main stage, and we're going to look at the auto sampler feature, which I just found out is in main stage. After all this time, the Red Matica software finally being incorporated into what we're doing here. And it's not in logic at this point, just in main stage. So, of course, I had to go out and buy main stage. It's $29, not terribly expensive. But if you're doing anything with external instruments, I really believe this is totally worth it. Okay, so auto sampling is the process of sampling an instrument using a set of parameters that we set, and then the actual plugin does all of the rest. This requires a MIDI connection and an audio connection. The MIDI goes out to the instrument, triggers the sound, the audio from that goes back into main stage and gets recorded. It gets auto-edited, it gets auto-looped, all of that stuff gets taken care of for you, and then you walk away with an instrument. The auto sampling process can be used with anything that has those two things, audio and MIDI. For instance, if you want to sample an, an instrument from a different DAW, like Pro Tools or Reason or Ableton, just connect the two together, send the MIDI into the other digital audio workstation, the audio out from that into main stage, and you can do it. So it's a great way to be able to create backups of sounds, to create virtual versions, to hook up external hardware like we were gonna do in our example today. Something that I don't wanna carry around with me because it's actually more fragile, and so I wanna be able to have a digital version of it. So what I did was create a new instrument, external instrument, chose my MIDI input, which is my MPK-88, on my uh, Motu MIDI Express, that's the output going to this external Oberheim, which I'm going to be sampling. MIDI channel 1, format to mono. The input is number 2 on my Sapphire Pro. And then, of course, the output here, we could choose whatever we want, but it's just going out 1 and 2. And what we're going to do now is actually initiate the auto sampler. It goes in an audio effects selection here. I'm not sure why this is like this right now. It could be previous version, but under my main utility, it's not here. But if I go down here to main stage utility, auto sampler is there. Now with the auto sampler shows up as this plugin. This is definitely coming from the Red Matica software world. So they had their auto sampler previously and it allows us to do a few things. And this is so easy, but there's a couple of really cool things. So first of all, I'm going to change how many notes we do to have one sampled, skip two, sampled, skip two, sampled, skip two, etc. And with velocity layers, because this Oberheim, it's an analog synth, but it has a MIDI to CV conversion unit on it. And with that, the velocity is set to change the filter frequency. So it actually has a benefit here to doing more velocity layers. We want to do it exponential. That way it has more definition in the low parts of the sound. As it goes up, what we do not need 10 seconds. Four is fine. The range start and stop is fine for this. We could go down if we wanted to. Every time we go down, it adds quite a bit more time because we have to sample all these notes at six different velocity layers. Then I want to have it looped. That means it's going to find loop points and automatically loop them for playback. We'll have it search and do a crossfade. We have other options, but this is a fairly simple waveform, so we can just do that basic one. Approximate starting ending point, but it'll find the best one. Now all we need to do is say sample. We could change the input gain, but it's already set decently. You can see. Decent, but... Sometimes getting a little bit up there. Let's 
looks like we can maybe go up 10. Yeah, that'll be a little bit better. Just to get it closer to the loud level. Then we push sample. We can create, this is the second one I've done today, so we're gonna do number two. And you're gonna see it's gonna make a .exs file. Now it has to go through and record all the velocity layers for each of the notes. So we're gonna pause and come back when this is done. Okay, so now we have our file. We're gonna actually open up inside Alchemy. We're gonna put this in source A. So we click on the name and say import audio. And I already have the place where it is here because I was just surfing there, but you can just find the location from the list, choose that file, and then down here we have to choose analysis mode. So we can change the type of synthesis we're gonna do with this, depending on the choice. We're gonna make this a sampler option. Mapping, pitch, we're gonna leave this as normal. And we'll say import. It'll take just a second. It's converting the EXS file into Alchemy here. And once we have this done, we're gonna be able to play this now. And you'll see for simplicity, I've got B, C, and D all turned off for the moment. But if we want, one thing we can do, of course, is click on actual A under sampler. You'll see we have a waveform here. But if we want, we can click on edit, and that takes us into the actual instrument. See, I can actually play polyphony even though the Sem Pro is just a monophonic synth. So again, we can look in here. One thing I want to do is say unlimited. We're going to re-import this. I want to see if it looks any different. Just because I want to compare the different options as we bring it in. It's taking a little longer here, which leads me to believe that something else is going on. But the simple thing is, we can now use this external hardware synth that I have inside Alchemy as a sound source, and we can start doing whatever we want with it. Just as the name Alchemy suggests, this is something we can kind of have a laboratory and really push our boundaries with it. Uh, yeah, so that's what we wanted to do. You can see now, instead of a simplified version, we have the full version with all of the different velocity, the nice different timbre texture as we play softer or louder. Okay, so that's the process of using the auto sampler to get that synth inside of our logic session. We could also open this up in the EXS24 if we wanted to. Doesn't matter, works in both places.